So the topic is very uh, personal to me. Is AI hero or villain? And I'm here to share my experience with you and my beliefs with you. I'm a Silicon Valley based entrepreneur, kind of retired now. Uh, investor, uh, I have invested in 28 plus companies. Uh, total valuation of those companies close to $28 billion, or not 28, sorry, $1 billion revenues total. 60% uh, of these companies heavily rely on uh, AI for their existence. So whatever I'm going to share with you, I am going to, uh, I practice that. If we go back 70 years ago, a uh, little boy, George Lucas, was born in Modesto. I'm sure you have heard his name. And I shamelessly picked these pictures from Star Wars. I blame Star Wars for everything. Why? So just remember those communicator when as a kid we used to carry. Some of you may not be even born at that time. And it was the most amazing thing. And I remember first time when I hold the communicator, basically mobile phone in my hand, it was the most amazing experience. I never thought it's possible. So he has shown us the dream and what is possible. Just, just one sec, this video is like weird. to fix it. It's distracting me. All right. So AI has given us tools to process information faster, better, and cheaper. We all know that. And some of you may be in AI industry and using this as a technology. But if you think about what Star Wars showed us almost 50 years ago, we are all living that today. We are building those kind of things, including on different kind of uh, even flying cars today. It resembles to the design what Star Wars has showed us. So what I'm talking about it is curiosity and imagination goes hand in hand. And that's how we develop and innovate things for our, us. Now let's talk about the pressing issue right now we have is COVID-19. I'm sure all of you are familiar with that. And especially some of you are in London. It's, it's very interesting what is happening in Europe in a, in a sad way and in US and the whole world and how it is impacting all of us as a human race. But remember, some of you may have read the data about Spanish flu. One third of the world population just disappear, just disappear from the face of Earth. And uh, what we were, because we didn't have the technology, we didn't have the systems in place. We have done some work with IMHE. I'm not sure if you're familiar with IMHE. I am actually predict health data. Uh, Dr. Chris Nure is a famous uh, speaker, author, and phenomenal guy. He uh, coined the term global burden of disease. He works with the Bill Gates Foundation and developed these models to generate uh, mortality, to predict how and where things are going to happen. Unbelievable data set they have, phenomenal systems and infrastructure they have. And we have seen firsthand what AI can do. So we are able to predict even mortality rate in this situation. We are able to predict what we can or cannot do at this point of time, even to the extent that he is involved and his department is involved in helping uh, uh, US government uh, in setting up these protocols, what they should or shouldn't be doing. And if you see it, uh, excluding New York and rest of the America, uh, the impact is there, but it's, was, it's still manageable. It is sad where we are, but we are working really hard. And there is a phenomenal work we have done together. Uh, all it is possible because of the AI. So AI is really, really helping mankind to go to the next level. 
big one, next big one is uh, Cure. There are a lot of companies working together and building these models. In earlier time, how do you cure a patient? You have to find a patient first. How do you find 50 or 100 or 500 COVID-19 patients to try? We can't do that. So there is a lot of um, uh, computer models we are using. There are a lot of analysis we are doing using computers and AI to predict what can be the outcome. And based on that, we are doing some testing and then we are taking it to the next level. Uh, several companies are trying. I'm, on, uh, I'm involved in, uh, very actively involved in uh, India-based uh, COVID-19 task force. And uh, I can see all the institutions over there collaborating the data and they are building these models to predict what is possible. And uh, it's, it's a game changer what's happening today in terms of the collaboration and in terms of the AI. To the extent that we have set up the uh, several uh, labs for x-rays, our goal is to go to almost a million x-rays per day analysis. All that is possible because of AI. So AI is really changing our world phenomenally. Any question? So uh, coming back to uh, what is next, how AI is helping or uh, creating challenges for mankind. Imagine we have to deliver drugs to 7 billion people, which we haven't even invented. How can we do that? We need completely new kind of infrastructure. We need a new logistics system. We need to build the underlying foundational layer to deliver that. That doesn't exist today. We are all looking for ways how to do that. Bill Gates has already started uh, six manufacturing plants. All the other countries are already gearing up. I know two pharma companies in India, they already set up the areas and the way they are going to manufacture these drugs. And we don't even know what it is. All that is possible because we are able to analyze all this data and leverage AI to change this. Oops. So, who are we as a human? We are explorer. We are exploring the world for generations. We started with a small boat and we conquer the world. We all know the history, how we discover all the land, including India, how we discover every single thing in our uh, in past. To manufacture, if you talk about it, today we are building these giga factories and that itself is creating a lot of interesting challenges. But what is next? How we are going to do manufacturing? going forward, it is going to be decentralized. It's going to be completely different infrastructure to go. Health and aging, that's a huge problem. My, some of my friends are involved heavily into uh, aging. Uh, they are really focused on how can we extend the life to the extent that even dying become optional. And they are leveraging AI to build that infrastructure and that data set. Uh, next is, the big one is our curiosity. Only with our curiosity, we are able to solve these issues and these problems and these challenges. Let me go to the next slide. Oops. Let me come to the real slide. This is the big question I've been asked and I want to share and discuss with you. What kind of societal impact do I see? So one big one is I don't see that AI is evil. I believe AI is really solving major problems and major challenges the world has. However, it requires a new way of thinking. What kind of skills we need for the new world? That is a big challenge. We have to define our education system. Now, if we look back or we think about COVID-19, it has created another interesting challenge for our uh, next generation. 
how do you educate them? Because they cannot go to the school. They cannot go and study there. So how do you do that? That's one biggest problem I see right in front of us, which uh, hopefully we'll be able to solve very soon because time is of essence. I clearly see if we don't solve it in next few months, we have huge challenges because there are millions of kids and there is literally have no way to uh, learn new skills. Next big one I see it is, do we need a global universe, universal basic income? A uh, lot of people are talking about it. Uh, even in US, we are having a lot of conversation around it. How do we do that if it is required or should we even think about it or not? Uh, all governments are helping uh, the citizens, but what kind of impact it is going to be in the next four or five years, we don't know. Inflation is going to be a huge issue, we all know that. Maybe we have to increase the taxes, that's going to be another challenge. It's a huge uh, complex situation and we are still finding uh, data to analyze it and hopefully we'll be able to solve it quickly. Next big one I see is the problem of health. In America, after Obamacare, things have changed. However, it is still a huge problem. Most of the world doesn't have quality healthcare, the kind of healthcare we can enjoy and rest. How we are going to solve that? Uh, what kind of hospitals we are going to create? What kind of technology we need to create? Uh, what kind of technology we need to invent? The big problem I clearly see it is even the doctors. We can't produce enough doctors for uh, 9 billion people or 12 billion people based on the uh, data you look at it. Another big challenge I see it is uh, we all been taught and it is almost true that 20% people control the future of 80%. So basically the wealth is pretty, uh, not evenly decided, but still it's in the hand of 20%. However, I see as a challenge uh, with AI, is it going to shrink to 98.2? So 2% people will decide our future. Is that a great future? Is that a future you and me are going to enjoy or we love living into that? That is something we need to understand or think about it. Oh, I'm just gathering my thoughts. <laughs> so these are some of my bold predictions for the, this century. Uh, one of uh, one particular favorite of mine is uh, food. Uh, I am personally invested into food and I do believe food is the biggest challenge. How can we produce zero carbon footprint alternative food source? So the company I've invested into, they have developed a, a chicken DNA based protein, uh, which you don't require to kill an animal. You don't need to do anything. It's, a, it's basically a very interesting fermentation process. They have created a strain and with that they are developing it. It's a phenomenal company and they're doing extremely well. Well, uh, that's all I have for uh, you to share with. Uh, if you guys have any question, I'll be happy to answer. There's no question for me. So we are a pretty smaller group. Maybe we can introduce ourselves. By the way, I'm Sanjeev Goyal and I run an AI company called Extent AI. All right, thank you very much, guys. Really appreciate your time, and uh, I hope you enjoy the my talk. Thank you. <laughs>